Hello and welcome. I'm Soaring Rising and you're watching Hornbill TV Prime at Night. The Supreme Court has directed the Nagaland government, the Union Ministry of Home Affairs and the UPAC to finalize the process of the appointment of the State Director General of Police on or before December 19th. A bench comprising Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrajut and Justice P.S. Narasimha refused to grant 60 days time as sought by the Union Public Service Commission for finalizing the process relating to the appointment of the Nagaland Police Chief. The bench said failure to comply with its direction may lead to use of coercive arms of law by it. In July 2018, the top court had passed a slew of directions on police reforms in the country and restrained all states and UTs from appointing any police officer as acting DJPs to avoid favoritism and nepotism in such high-level appointments. As per the process, the UPAC, in consultation with the state government and other stakeholders, has to prepare a list of three senior police officers and out of them, the state can appoint anyone as the DGP. Presently, 1991 batch, IPS officer TJ Longkumer is continuing as the Naglin DGP. Longkumer was appointed as the DGP on June, 2000, June 27, 2018. He was given a one-year extension last year till August 31, 2022. This year, he was again given an extension of six months till February next year. The top court has been hearing a plea seeking enforcement of the apex court's earlier directions on appointment of the DGP. The Southern Angami Public Organization has clamped restrictions on the movement of citizens of Mao and Manipur from traveling to or entering the Southern Angami areas following what a statement from the SAYO said were unwanted acts allegedly committed by the Mao Council in regard to Kezolsa and the TPO's verdict. The SAYO said the restrictions on Mao citizens will start from December 15. The Southern Angami Public Organization said it conducted its general meeting on December 7 in Kohima during which it deliberated on various issues especially pertaining to Kezolsa and the TPO verdict. The SAPO has asked the Mao Council and the Manipur government to cease all activities within the disputed land and reaffirm the arbitration undertaken. The SAYO said it will not tolerate such unwanted acts committed by the Mao Council. The organization has asked the Mao citizens to immediately stop aggravating the situation with the help of the Manipur government. The public of the Southern Angami area has unanimously decided to prohibit Mao citizens from traveling or entering the Southern Angami areas with effect from December 15 until the issue is resolved by the Board of Arbitrators, the statement said. This notice is issued for their security and well-being, the organization stated. Any untoward incident as consequence of the violation of this notice will be understood as an act of own volition and the Southern Nangami people will not be held responsible, the SAYO stated. Tokupu Sumi emerged as the winner of the Naga Chef Season 9, while Kenil Hobe U Kensei and Kazu Sangba Jamir were adjudged as the runners-up. The names of the winner were declared during the finale at the ongoing Hornbill Festival Arena Heritage Village, Kisama. The winner walked home with Rs. 2 lakh cash prize, while runners-up received given gift hampers. The ninth season of the Naga Chef was organized by the Synergy Group Enterprise in collaboration with the Tourism Department, Government of Nagaland. The judges were Rovi Chazi, Alem Jungla Jamir, Nunes Senyo Chaze, Chef Joel Basumatri. The grand finale of the Naga Chef Season 9 was held with renowned English Australian chef and restaurant Gary Megan as the guest judge. Hello, yeah, my name is Kenny Lubi and I'm from Kohima. My name is Kazu Sangba Jamir and I'm from Kohima. My name is Kenny Lubi and we talk with Mara Halas. Being a chef, uh, I'm just a home cook. Uh, actually, I'm not, not a chef right now. I don't say home cook, but see, uh, cooking is my passion, and a good cook can uh, connect. We can connect with the people, and yeah, chopping, tasting, and everything is just my passion and my hobby. I do. do I like to do that. Um, cooking, kuchh bolu do, matlab moi pachat ember pishu kuchh bhai na, and then like ita ita moi. I went to a restaurant or hotel and then I went to a platform and I went to a finalist and I went to a place where I deserve it. I respect it. I went to a restaurant and I went to a restaurant and I went to a restaurant. I went to a restaurant and I went to a restaurant and I went to a restaurant. 
ไฟนอลสตักตาฮาดูมุกุชุไปนานะจิตานิชนาบาฮิลุชมุตอืมเนาะเซมไลค์บราเดอร์เซจิตลินิชิลิเวตอไฟนอลสตอปทรีดอป
without further ado, the winner of the ninth annual Naga Chef competition is <coughs> Tokopu Sumi. <laughs> A devastating fire broke out at the Fatasi Lambari area in Guwahati on Friday evening. According to reports, the fire has completely gutted down houses of at least 150 families. The blazing inferno is suspected to have been erupted after more than 15 cylinders exploded in a slum area behind the Kamakya Ram Baro College in Fatasi. All arterial roads were blocked after the fire broke out. Meanwhile, fire tenders have reached the spot and are continuing efforts to douse the massive fire. However, no casualties or injuries have been reported in the incident so far. Meghalaya Bharatiya Janata Party President Ernest Maori on Friday congratulated his party's leadership for registering a historic win in Gujarat. The BJP won 156 seats in the 182 members' house. Maori said it is necessary for the state to elect the BJP in the Assembly elections of 2023 for development schemes of the Narendra Modi government to reach the people. Talking about the result of the Himachal Pradesh Assembly polls, the Meghalaya BJP President Hope that in the next election the BJP would be elected. Today we have called this uh, press conference uh, under the uh, direction of the national leader. So, on behalf of the state BJP Mikhail Pradesh, I would like to congratulate to the people of Gujarat for giving clear mandate to the BJP to form the next government in Gujarat. This victory has uh, indicated that the people of Gujarat continues to believe to the BGP, continue to bring development in the state. I also sincerely feel that in Meghalaya, people are focusing on development of the state like Gujarat. In the last 50 years, of the statehood succeed government has uh, failed to bring development in the state. Our youth now are facing problem for unemployment issue. From last eight years, under the able leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, different schemes of central schemes are being proposed for the people of the state. But the state government is not taking interest for getting the scheme implemented in. It is therefore required for the people to elect the BGP so that the development scheme by Modi government can reach to the last man in the society, where we call in the BGP Antodia. In Himachal Pradesh, even though we have not been able to attain the majority mark. Still, I congratulate to the people of Himachal Pradesh. As you know that in Himachal Pradesh, the people give five years to each parties. It's not like they continue to have the same government. Hopefully, by the next election, BGP will be elected in the state of Himachal Pradesh. So it is a great victory for us. That's why we have called this uh, press conference today to congratulate the people of Gujarat, especially, and also the people of Himachal Pradesh.
The Meghalaya BJP is all set to fight in all 60 constituencies of the state. Maori said that the party has requested the central leadership to announce the candidates list as early as possible. He said that the BJP is waiting for the election commission to declare the dates for the poll. After that, the party will call for applications. The state BJP president claimed there are aspiring candidates from all the constituencies, stating that it's not only for the BJP to raise issues of corruption. He said there are other political parties who are allies and if they are concerned, they should also raise the issue too. Over 10 flights were cancelled at Chennai Airport due to adverse weather conditions arising due to cyclones. Mendoz informed officials on December 9. A total of 13 flights arriving from and departing to various locations were cancelled. The officials also advised the general masses to check with the concerned airlines in view of the flights affected due to the extreme weather conditions. Earlier, three districts of Tamil Nadu were given a red alert informed the officials. The districts that are on red alert include Chengalpatu, Vilupuram and Kanchipuram. The officials also informed that under the cyclone's influence, most places over the north coastal Tamil Nadu and Puducherry are likely to have heavy to very heavy rainfall and extremely heavy rainfall at isolated places. Cyclone will continue to move west northwestwards and cross, cross over north Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and adjoining south Andhra Pradesh coast between Puducherry and Sihari Kota around Mahabalipuram as a cyclonic storm with a maximum sustained wind speed of 65 to 75 km per hour, gusting to 85 km per hour during midnight, informed the officials. Mizoram's Rural Development Minister Lalrat Kima today inaugurated a seventh regional SARS fair organized by the Mizoram State Rural Livelihood Mission. SARS stands for Sale of Articles of Rural Artisan Society. He stated that as much as importance is given to developing self-help groups by the union government, the state's government also gives special emphasis to its development and growth. Through the help of self-help groups, the minister stated many women from economically weak backgrounds have been able to have livelihood through a regular source of income that they make from selling their products. Mizoram State Rural Livelihood Mission Chief Executive Officer Lacha Dami reported that the MZSRLM covers 11 districts and 26 RD blocks of the state. The 7th Regional SARS Fair has 77 self-help groups and food entrepreneurs showcasing their products. The International Trade Fair got underway in Kohima at Rishi Skywalk, North Block, Kezike near Koinonia Church. The organizer Vito Society informed that the fair houses 40 stalls which will go till December 24. Guest countries at the fair include Egypt, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. The fair features Egypt furniture, Afghanistan dry fruit, Italian sofa design, Rajasthan achar, Thailand kitchenware, Indian handloom, West fashions, limited exclusive fashion warehouse, Kashmiri shawl, Melamal socks and garments, carpet, Ayurvedic medicines, kitchen wares, unbreakable plastic buckets, jewellery among others. The fair opens from 8.30 a.m. till 9.00 p.m. With a commitment to eliminate incidents of border killing and put collaborative efforts to control border crimes, the three-day-long Border Coordination Conference between BSF and Border Guards of Bangladesh concluded at Tripura BSF Frontier Headquarters in Agartala on Friday. 
briefing the media persons shortly after the signing of joint records. IG BSF Tripura Frontiers Sumit Saran said special emphasis was given to issues particularly insurgent activities, various transborder crimes that include smuggling of contraband items like drugs and narcotic substances, border violation, etc. were discussed. The BSF IG also maintained that the relations between both the border guarding forces have scaled new heights in recent years. My dear media friends, as you, my dear media friends, as you all are aware that IG, BSF and Region Commander BJP level Border Coordination Conference we started on 7 December 2022 and has concluded today with signing of joint record of discussion document at Akartala Tripura. A 12 member Indian delegation participated in the conference and 13 member delegation from Bangladesh was led by His Excellency Tanvir Kim Chaudhary, ADG, Region Commander, Southeast Region, BJP, Katogram. During the conference, various issues of bilateral interest which would pave the way for enhancing the understanding and increased cooperation between the border guarding forces were discussed at length. Special emphasis was given to focus issues, particularly in certain activities, areas strong border crimes, including smuggling of contraband items like drugs, narcotic substances, border violations, pending infrastructure and development work, and coordinated border management plan. Issues related to confidence building amongst the troops of BSF and BGB, as well as the local population on either side, are also discussed. The second edition of the Winter Open Air Gun Shooting Competition organized by the Air Gun Sporting Association of Nagaland, which has now been incorporated as part of the Hornbill Festival, started today. Ajit Kumar Ranjan, Deputy Commissioner of WOKA, was the special guest at the event. During the inaugural program, the Likya Community Hall, Deputy Commissioner Ranjan said such events have a positive output. He appealed to the ASN to spread awareness among the youths and to channel their enthusiasm to sports rather than damaging wildlife and to let youths excel in the field to bring laurels and achievements to the state through their talent. Further, he lamented that there are many factors that restrain the potential of the youths. However, he was optimistic that in the near future, their talents would be met. Altogether, 38 individuals registered for the competition. Nizo Belho emerged as the champion of the event. Madan Muli and Ashamo Ezung were the first and second runners-up, respectively. Two days back, we had a state-level competition with the wo uh, district women's sports association, uh, where the teams from different districts participated in Vokha. We also had an angling competition uh, at uh, even at a national level in a way in Doyang. And now we have this uh, um, air gun uh, shooting uh, competition, that also at state level. So Vokha as a district is uh, able to hold and uh, invite sports person from across the state, from outside the district and hold such event. It's a matter of uh, honor and uh, a great, uh, uh, I would like to appreciate the role played by the respective associations to hold such kind of events because it's not easy. I know the challenges involved with the kind of infrastructure and uh, still being able to manage and this is the second competition I'm told so uh, this is really great and you are able to carry it forward. I hope and wish that uh, you will be able to carry it in future also and uh, we will be able to hold more such co uh, competition in Vokha district at uh, <coughs> at state level or at national level also in future, in time to come. So first of all, a uh, great, uh, the, you know, I want to commend the respective association. Behind us, uh, there is a, a practice trial session going on and the main tournament will be held inside the auditorium Likya Community Hall. Now I want to highlight about ASAN. This ASAN was founded by uh, 10 members of us and then we are from all the uh, different parts of uh, the state. and. Uh, this year, we are very happy and we welcome the kind gesture of the government uh, for including this event as an extension of our Hornbill uh, Festival event here at Voka. We thank the government for that initiative. That's all for now. Stay tuned to Hornbill TV for more.